Before we begin, uh, here's just a little housekeeping. First, it's important to remember that this is not medical advice. I am making this video with the sole purpose of giving you a jumping off point for your own research. Second, be kind to each other in the comments. Everyone's transition looks different, and what works best for you might not be what's best for someone else. Finally, YouTube's algorithm works off a few metrics. Watch time, whether or not you're subscribed, and whether or not you click on to another video from my channel. The best free way for you to support my content creation is to watch the videos all the way to the end, click the like button, and subscribe to my channel. All right, let's get to it. Hey everybody, it's Zach Lettercast, and welcome back to my channel, or if it's your first time here, welcome for the first time. We're going to be talking about the sort of two different variations of abdominal phalloplasty and I'm going to talk about what kind of basic overview, pros and cons, cost, who offers it, and then we're going to actually go into a more in-depth surgical discussion on what the procedure itself actually looks like. As always, please remember I'm not a medical professional. Talk to your doctors before making any decisions. Don't do any of this at home, and uh, without further ado, let's begin. All right, so the next option I want to talk about is abdominal phalloplasty. This is also known as suprapubic phalloplasty. It has a shorter operative and recovery time than most other surgeries, especially because microsurgery is not required, um, and you can have a buried or preserved clitoris. So uh, one of the huge positives to this surgery is that you will avoid the forearm scar, the dreaded scar that a lot of transmasculine people are not really interested in having. Um, additionally, you should be able to do penetration and there's generally no nerve connection required unless you choose to do urethroplasty, in which case there's a nerve connection that's used to help indicate to your body when to avoid and when to not. <laughs> um, and it's only got two stages. Stage one is your phalloplasty, which is done via abdominal pedicle. Stage two is your glansplasty, and that may take place during stage one, depending on your surgeon. But in most cases, it can be done as early as one week after your phalloplasty surgery. Um, and then the costs range pretty widely, anywhere between 30 and 50,000 USD. And that's going to be the average cost for pretty much any other surgery that we talk about in this video. And there are a plethora of surgeons offering abdominal fallow. Um, a lot of them are in Texas and Pennsylvania, interestingly enough. For those of you who are looking into this particular surgery option, I highly recommend checking out these studies as well as just hitting up Google Scholar and typing in the surgical procedure you're interested in learning more about. Look for results, look for what the procedure entails, look for pros and cons, and look for newer stuff. And, you know, as much as the academic community kind of is dismayed by older studies, it, they're still worth looking at. Obviously, you're going to come across some terminology that isn't as culturally sensitive as modern times. So you might come across the word transsexual. You might come across the word uh, biological female, so on and so forth. Take it with a grain of salt. Look at the statistics. And obviously, as with any study, research who wrote it, who participated, because that will give you a lot of value in terms of how much salt you should be taking with that study. The next option is bird wing abdominal phalloplasty. It's kind of a subset of the abdominal phalloplasty that we just talked about. It gets its name from the way in which the abdomen is cut to create the neophallus. Interestingly enough, the way that it's cut does minimize visible scarring. It makes it a lot easier to hide when there is scarring. Um, it also provides potential for implants and urethroplasty. And there's an easier post-op recovery, again, due to the shape in which the pedicles are cut. The results are an unremarkable linear scar on the abdomen, space for an implant. You're going to look at three to five inches in length. There is some tactile sensation. Surgery costs are pretty much the same as the others. 
And your surgeons that offer bird wing fallow are likely going to be anybody who offers abdominal fallow. They should be familiar with this procedure. If they're not, and that's something you're looking to do, talk to them and see if they'd be interested in reducing your cost in order to gain the experience by using you effectively as a guinea pig patient. But some surgeons will agree to that. In bird wing abdominal phalloplasty, the technique is that under general anesthesia, a patient is placed in the lithotomy position. Urethral lumen is catheterized easily by inserting a Foley's catheter. A bird wing incision is marked with its base in suprapubic, mons pubic location, and lateral extensions up to lower abdominal skin crease, extending both flanks. The base to limb ratio of the flaps is kept at 4 or 5 to 1, so that adequate blood supply is ensured to the most distal end. It may be noted that a unique feature of this flap design is the common base, which sustains the blood supply to both flaps. And the depth of the incision reaches up to the anterior rectus sheath at the external oblique, aponeurosis, from medial to lateral. Thus, the blood supply of this region is provided by superficial epigastric and circumflex iliac vessels. Abdominal flap, apposition, and phalloplasty, both lateral wings are approximated in the midline using subcuticular structures. Traditional abdominal phalloplasty, contrary to the bird wing procedure, uses a somewhat rectangular shape instead to form the neophallus while remaining pedicled and still attached to the suprapubic or pubic mons region. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I hope this was incredibly helpful and educational. If anything, I would like to just inspire people to do their own research and take control over their own health. If you like what you saw today and you want to see more, hit that button down below, subscribe, hit the like button, and of course share this with your friends, people who you think this might be helpful to. And leave a comment below. What do you want to see me cover in depth? You know, what else would you like to see from me? Thank you, and I hope you have a great day.